Hai, Assalamualaikum Jom kita revise sambil berehat Sambil berehat pun Kita boleh belajar tahu dengan tengok handphone Apa tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula Hai, Assalamualaikum Jom kita revise sambil berehat Sambil berehat pun Kita boleh belajar tahu dengan tengok handphone Apa tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula Hai semua, Assalamualaikum, apa khabar? Jadi dalam video kali ini kita nak tengok berkaitan dengan Microscopic Model of Current and Ohm's Law Kita akan mulakan terlebih dahulu dengan tajuk Microscopic Model of Current Jadi untuk kita fahamkan Microscopic Model of Current Ada beberapa poin sepenting yang perlu awak ingat Pertama sekali berkaitan dengan conductor Where conductor is a metal There is a presence of free electrons only in conductor So seperti yang ditunjukkan dalam gambar rajah di sini There is free electrons that move randomly in conductor Okay, jadi poin yang kedua yang kita perlu faham Yang paling penting dan mesti ingat That the electrons is moving randomly in a conductor Okey, dan poin yang ketiga iaitu berkaitan dengan electric field yang terbentuk bila konduktor tadi kita sambungkan pada bateri seperti yang ditunjukkan dalam gambar rajah di sebelah. Jadi, bila konduktor is connected to a battery, there is an electric field set up inside the wire. For example, here, kita belajar dalam chapter pertama dahulu that electric field must be directed from positive terminal to negative terminal. Jadi, dalam kes ini, direction of the electric field must be to the left. Di mana direction of the electric field must be from positive plate to negative plate. Okey, jom kita tengok pula points yang keempat. Di mana disebabkan adanya electric field ini tadi, apa yang berlaku kepada semua electrons yang bergerak secara random tadi? So, the electrons will experience electric force. Kita dah belajar juga dalam chapter 1 bila kita ada charge di mana charge itu terletak pada kawasan yang ada electric field Apa yang berlaku, that charge will experience an electric force where the equation F is equal to QE. Pernah jumpa kan dalam chapter 1? Jadi, apa yang berlaku selepas itu? So, let's draw the direction of the electric force first where the direction of the electric force on an electron must be towards to the positive plate of the battery. Okay, jadi electron tadi mestilah attracted to the positive plate. Boleh, where the direction of the electric force must be opposite direction with the electric field. And then, point yang kelima, kita mesti faham that the electron study tends to move with constant average velocity di mana kita panggil dia sebagai drift velocity bila ada force that acted on that electron so what happened to the electrons electron tadi akan mula bergerak dan bila dia bergerak dia ada drift velocity where the direction of the drift velocity is the same direction as the force sebab ada force ke kanan Jadi, elektron tadi akan bergerak ke kanan. Dan elektron tadi nak pergi mana? Elektron tadi akan bergerak ke positif plate. Boleh? Jadi, kalau elektron bergerak daripada negatif to positif plate, and what happen next? Point yang keenam adalah berkaitan dengan current. Where current I is flowing in the opposite direction of electrons flow. Kalau electron bergerak daripada negative plate to positive plate, current pula bergerak daripada positive plate to negative plate. Kena ingat ya, the flow of current must be from positive terminal to negative terminal. Okay, kita selesai microscopic model of current. Now, let's define about electric current I. Where I is equal to dq over dt. 
So electric current I is defined as the total charge Q flowing through the area per unit time T. I, iaitu current, sama dengan dQ, the total charge Q bahagi dengan masa. Okay, dan mesti ingat ya, unit untuk current adalah ampere. Okay, equation seterusnya adalah berkaitan dengan charge. Where Q is the amount of charge equal to Ne. Where N is the number of electron. Where E is the charge of the electron. Okay? Hmm, sebelum kita discuss lebih lanjut, saya nak tanya awak, apa maksud 1 ampere ya? Pernah tahu ke? Apakah yang dimaksudkan dengan 1 ampere of current? So, 1 ampere is actually 1 coulomb of charge that passing through the surface area in 1 second. Okay? So, kita boleh tulis 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per 1 second. Boleh ingat ke? Sekarang saya nak beralih pula pada tajuk Ohm's Law di mana bila kita cerita berkaitan dengan Ohm's Law mesti ingat equation ini iaitu V is equal to IR. So what is the definition of Ohm's Law? Where Ohm's Law states that the potential difference across a conductor V is directly proportional to the current I if its physical condition and the temperature are constant. V is directly proportional to I. Where I is increasing, V also increasing. So, let's look at this graph. So, kita ada graph V against I. So, since V is directly proportional with I at constant temperature, means that we're going to have a straight line graph of V against I. Jadi, berdasarkan equation, kita boleh nampak bila kita kira the gradient of the graph here, the gradient of the graph is constant, where V over I is equal to constant value. Kecerunannya adalah constant. Jadi, berdasarkan equation juga, kita nampak Bila kita ada graph V against I dan bila kita kira kecerunan of that graph, it is actually the value of the resistance R. Okay, where V over I is equal to R. So, we call it as ohmic conductor obeys Ohm's law. Okay. Alright, next, let's move to the resistance and resistivity. Apa itu resistivity? So, look at here that resistivity is a measure of a material's ability to oppose the flow of electric current through the material. Okay, so symbol bagi resistivity kita boleh tulis sebagai rho and the equation is equal to Ra over L. Where resistivity of a material can be calculated by using this equation. So, R adalah resistance where A is the cross-sectional area and L is the length of the material. When we try to rearrange this equation, we actually can calculate the resistance of a material is equal to rho times L over A. Jadi, resistance sesuatu conductor, kita boleh katakan ia bergantung pada resistivity dan ia juga bergantung pada the length of the material. Semakin panjang length sesuatu material ataupun conductor tersebut, semakin besarlah resistance dia. Okay? Dan macam mana pula relationship antara resistance dengan area? Jadi dekat sini kita boleh nampak that resistance is inversely proportional with the cross-sectional area A. Bila cross-sectional area of a material is bigger, so what happened to the resistance? The resistance will become smaller. Okay? So based on this relationship, we can say that when the cross-sectional area is bigger, means that more electrons can flow in a time t. Boleh? Okay, jom kita tengok pula point yang penting. The next important thing is about resistance that also depends on temperature. Okay, so ingat lagi tak equation ini 
Jadi bila kita cerita berkaitan dengan relationship antara resistance and temperature, kita pun dah tahu bila temperature increase, what happen to the resistance in a conductor? The resistance also increase. Di mana resistance is directly proportional to the temperature. So based on this equation, kita boleh nampak hubungan antara R dan juga temperature di mana mereka berkadar terus. Boleh. Jadi berdasarkan equation ini kita boleh lihat where T minus T naught it is actually the change of the temperature. Maknanya when the change of the temperature is increasing ataupun semakin besar delta T actually the resistance in a conductor also increasing. Ingat ya, bila temperature increase, resistance also increase. Tapi kenapa perkara ini boleh berlaku? Okey, jom kita lihat gambar rajah di bawah. Dekat sini kita ada metal ion dan yang warna biru ini pula kita panggil sebagai free electrons. Jadi kena ingat when the temperature is increasing, actually the metal ions of the conductor vibrate with greater amplitude. Dan apa pula yang berlaku? So the collisions between the free electrons study dengan metal ions juga akan meningkat means that more collisions happen. Bila lebih banyak pelanggaran yang berlaku, ini boleh menyebabkan flow of electrons akan berkurang ataupun terganggu. So, bila pergerakan elektron terganggu, means that the flow of electrons will decrease. Dan bila the flow of electrons is decreasing ataupun kita kata electrons are slow down, means that the resistance in a conductor will increase. Sebab itu, bila temperaturenya tinggi, dia boleh meningkatkan resistance sesuatu conductor tersebut. Boleh? Okey, jadi saya rasa sampai di sini sahaja dulu video kali ini dan kita akan sambung lagi dalam next video. Jumpa lagi. Bye-bye.